Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Series Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is a show that is our Helium 10 Weekly Buzz, where we give you a rundown on the latest news articles that are going on in the Amazon, Walmart, and e-commerce world, and we give you interviews of the week and also training tips that will help give you serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. Let's go ahead and see what's buzzing. Now, we've got uh, a, just a couple news uh, stories today. One, um, some snippets from the Amazon Q4 report from last week. We also have an update to Amazon sponsored brand ads, a little little different interface on how you can do the creative display portion of it. Uh, we also have an interesting article where they interviewed some aggregators to see what is the state of the aggregators business in 2023. We've got a special snippet from an interview from from Destiny about PPC, and we have also got a training tip of the week that will help you potentially put money back in your pocket. With the help of Helium 10, it's not even about the normal tool you might think, which is Refund Genie. It's about another tool, so we'll get to that. But let's go ahead and hop, first of all, into the news. The first article we have today is actually just a press release from Amazon, and it's their a quarterly report. All right. Now, the interesting thing here, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of business stuff that you might think is not very, you know, relevant, you know, to Amazon sellers. And there's some interesting things just overall, you know, Amazon said that their net sales increased uh, 9% to $149 billion in Q4. International segment sales actually decreased 8%. Uh, so kind of interesting on that. But the some interesting parts here that I wanted to to, to highlight. I mean, obviously, you, you guys could you know check out this whole article, this whole release to see a lot of the the numbers. Was uh, over here where it talked about uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday that whole weekend. It talked. It said they had a record breaking holiday season with customers purchasing nearly half a billion items from small businesses in the U.S. That's from you guys right out there, right? It had Amazon's biggest Thanksgiving through Cyber Monday holiday shopping weekend, it says. Uh, customers around the world purchased hundreds of millions of products and small businesses in the U.S. So this is not like Amazon's you know own branded sales. They generated more than $1 billion of sales over the five-day period. So some interesting facts and figures coming out of the Cyber uh, Weekend. The same-day delivery is getting even faster. Uh, they said last year they really focused on certain metropolitan areas such as Los Angeles, San Francisco, Phoenix, Sacramento, and even Portland. You know, it's kind of like uh, that's not considered that huge of a city over there where there's hundreds of thousands of items available within hours. So that would be something that I would use, you know, our Helium 10 profits tool, which is our inventory heat maps and sales heat maps. I'd maybe check around those cities. Is Amazon storing my product in those cities? Do I see any concentration of sales in some of those cities? And then if so, you can kind of like, you know, take from this that, hey, as Amazon expands same day delivery, it's definitely helping perhaps, you know, my keyword rank in those areas and customers buying my products in those areas. They had a bunch of other facts and figures in this article talking about the you know, Lord of the Rings you know, show that, that they came out with and Thursday night football and things like that. Maybe or maybe not very uh, you know, important to you, but, but just check this out. There, there'll be a link to the article in the description below. Uh, the next article is about, uh, also from Amazon, and it's about a sponsored brands creative builder that might not be something that you're familiar with but basically it's something that uh, was launched last year we actually talked about it here in the show where you can like do your creatives for like sponsored brand video ads and, and amazon just wanted to let everybody know that there's like an update with how it is displayed and you can actually see this in a lot of your accounts you can already see this new ui and so where this is is like in sponsor in, in your you know manage campaigns if you were to create a campaign or manage an existing campaign and let's say it's a sponsored video campaign. Well, once you scroll down to the part where you can create the creative, there's this new UI that, that it has. And uh, it allows you to like one by one manipulate different aspects of it. You know, be like when this first launch, all you could do is like throw your video up in there. But now you're able to edit things like, you know, the logo, the brand name, the headline, the video itself, you know, the product. There's all these different little kind of mini widgets. If you guys are looking at my screen, on YouTube, you, you can you can see this, 
And so definitely, you know, check this out in your Seller Central if this has been released to you. A little bit cleaner way that you can manage your sponsored video campaigns and, and customize it a little bit more. Whereas perhaps maybe before, if you did this like when it first launched, all you did was throw a video in there. But now, you know, make sure that you're really getting the most out of uh, your sponsored video campaigns and sponsored brand campaigns. And this is across the board, uh, whether you're doing advertising Europe, USA, Asia, this is now released across the board. Next article is from Modern Retail. And it was, they're actually taught, it was actually um, an article where they, they interviewed a whole bunch of, of different aggregators, right, in 2023. And it was entitled, We're Buying Great Assets at 20 to 30% Lower Prices, How Amazon Aggregators have evolved in 2023. And, and I found this interesting because there's just different snippets where it talks about how a lot of these aggregators are getting more data driven. You know, a lot of those aggregators are, are getting data obviously from, from he companies like Helium 10 and, and trying to be a little bit more mindful of who they're investing in. You know, there was a lot of articles last year that talked about a large layoffs by some of the, uh, by some of the big aggregators. And so like people might be wondering like, are aggregators even buying companies? And something that I found interesting, uh, one, one of them said, hey, they're looking a little bit more at categories that are more gated or regulated because of barriers to entry. So like, you know, if you're selling in a category where maybe there's some chemicals involved and, and there's a long process to even get approved to sell in that category, you might have yourself be a little bit more attractive to some of these aggregators. Uh, another quote from another aggregator said, hey, we're looking more at keyword opportunities. It helps to both growth characteristics at the category level and the listing level and to be able to integrate all of that into a technology platform. Again, you know, people are using Helium 10 for this. You don't have to be an aggregator to be using this kind of strategy. You know, whether you're a newer seller, the regular Helium 10 tools will be just fine for doing this. You'd be doing the same thing that these, you know, huge billion dollar companies are doing. Or if you're a larger company, you know, uh, tools like Helium 10's Market Tracker 360, which is actually used by a lot of aggregators as well, is helping people get this kind of data. Another uh, aggregator that I hadn't heard of, they said, hey, we're aiming to concentrate on acquiring brands with patents and intellectual property in a bid to build a strong and defensible brand. So, you know, th this is definitely different than the old days of, of aggregators where it seemed like they were just buying any and every company. Uh, you know, they still are buying a lot of companies. But now if you're really wanting to make yourself you know, down the road, more attractive to aggregators. Uh, you know, it sounds like, hey, if you're if you're in a gated category, uh, if you've got a patent before, I would say most Amazon sellers don't even bother getting patents. If you have a, a a patent or some kind of intellectual property that really protects your your idea more, this could potentially make you a little bit more attractive to aggregators out there. And for those of you who are just interested in making your company a little bit more attractive down the road to any buyer, whether they're aggregate or not. Uh, if you're a diamond member of Helium 10, don't forget to take the exit ticket course, all right? You can activate that right where you see Freedom Ticket. We have a full course with Northbound where they really show you exactly, you know, what to do in order to get your company ready for an exit. All right, that's it for the news this week. I, I wanted to, to give you guys a quick link to our Serious Sellers Podcast Instagram here, all right? So just go to Serious Sellers Podcast all right, on Instagram, and you'll be able to, to see snippets of this. Like maybe you don't have time to watch every podcast out there, uh, right? You know, these are usually 30 to 40 minute episodes, but at Serious Sellers Podcast on Instagram, we have like 90 second clips of every single uh, episode. So I, I highly uh, recommend uh, checking it out and giving a subs uh, subscribe giving a subscribe, is that even the right word, guys? <laughs> giving a follow, I should say, to this so that you could, you know, get a quick taste of each episode. Then maybe if you find something that's really interesting to you, then you can go ahead and give it a full follow. So Serious Sellers Podcast on Instagram, guys. Make sure to give that a follow. All right, next up, we, uh, before our tip of the week, we have a, a clip from our Tacos Tuesday of the month where we bring in a different PPC expert to answer all of your questions. And so here is a clip on one of the questions. You guys will be able to see this episode coming next week. Now, based off one of the last questions that we talked about, I have this other question that says, off that answer before going all in on a ranking campaign, would you run them at mid bids to gather data on the CVR before TOS? Or I'm guessing if you have the budget, you can go for TOS from start. That's a great question. So typically I will go ahead and set up a rank campaign for my top three keywords and I will set a really high bid, like really, really high. And then 
after this campaign's running, like within 10 to 20 minutes, I'll go to Amazon and see if my ad's showing up on the very top of the page. If it is, my bid's high enough. And then I'll wait like 24 hours because I want to see how expensive that placement is and how well I'm converting. Because a, a lot of people always ask like, well, how do I know if I'm converting well on organic placements? And it's not easy to tell. You have to dig into search query performance report. You have that answer with ads. So I will test 24 hours and then I'll go look at my campaign and say, hey, for red marker, my conversion rate's 30% on the ads. That's really good. Let's go all in on it. If I see my conversion rates 5% for red marker, I shouldn't go all in because Amazon's not going to rank me well because customers don't like that product. So I typically run a quick test with high bids because then I can also see how expensive that placement is. I can say, hey, in order for me to be the number one placement on the page for red marker, it's going to cost me $8 and I'm going to convert at a 30%. And if I can afford that, I'll continue running the traffic and go all in. If I can't, I'll look at more long tail terms or lower my bid. All right, thank you for that, Shivali and Destiny. Uh, last tip of the week, this is just something that I actually just used in order to get $300 on my Project 5K account. So I just did a quick browse of some of my products where my product is, the size of my product is packaged as is inside the outside package, all right? So this is for products like a coffin shelf or an egg tray where really the outside package should be just like maybe, you know, decimal points of the original dimensions, right? So where this wouldn't be the case is like, let's say I have, you know, this cloth, this cloth might have a certain dimensions, right? But this is not how it's packaged, all right? A cloth is, is going to be folded and it's going to be a completely different, a different size, right? But if you've got packages that, uh, or products that, that, fit in a box of almost the same size, here's a quick thing that you should have your employees do if you have not been using like Helium 10 alerts from day one, all right? So what you wanna do is you just tell your employees to go to the listings and then scroll down to underneath the BSR chart that comes from Helium 10. There's this place called calculators. And then there's this little section that comes up where it has information like ASIN and the brand name and things like that takes like five seconds to do and it's a place where you can see item dimensions and package dimensions right next to each other the item dimensions you guys should have entered that when you first made your listing the package dimensions this is what changes sometime what amazon changes so like for example i'm looking at this coffin shelf and i can see hey the item dimensions 14 by 3.5 by 7.5 inches right? Without even looking at what my package is, I know that it should be just slightly bigger than each of those numbers. Sure enough, I look right here and I see package dimensions, 14.8 by 4.2 by 8. So I know on this one, it's okay, right? What I saw in one of my Project 5K was it was something similar to this, but then instead of 14.8, it was like 16. And on the other side was like, instead of 7.5 or 8, it was like 10. So I knew it was a little bit off. Sure enough, I, I checked my, my files and I saw that Amazon had the wrong dimension. So I, I told Amazon, hey, please, you know, check the remeasure, this package. Sure enough, they were like, yep, yeah, this is the wrong one. And then they, they're giving me a refund on all of my orders of the last couple of months where they were charging me at the wrong rate. So per product, guys, this will take you like 30 seconds to do. Really easy to just look at this and then be able to know uh, if Amazon changed your dimensions. Now, of course, the, the best thing you do then would be to make sure uh, Helium 10 Alerts is turned on this product going forward, and you'll never have to do this again. But if you never had alerts on or you're not sure, uh, if you didn't have alerts on from day one of your product, you're going to want to uh, check that out. One more quick tip, guys. If you're on that page, have your employees do this. It's the same Chrome extension, same exact product page. At the very top of the product, on the product page, they're right where the listing health score is. There's a view more button. Hit that view more button and then hit the button marketplace. And that is going to show you where all of other international hijackers are selling your product. Like we only sell this coffin shelf in North America. But look here, somebody is selling this coffin shelf in Germany, France, India, Japan, Australia, Netherlands even. And I could see how much left they have in stock. And, you know, so it might be something to get me to, Hey, I need to go on onto these other marketplaces to, to, to clean up these listings or to see who's, who's selling my product. So something that you just assign your, your employee to go to each of your product images 
or, or your product listings, and you can get both of these information. You can find something that could either save you money or make you a little bit more money. All right, guys, that's all for the news and tips for the week. We will see you guys next week to see what's buzzing.